morning, everyone. My name is Amy Barrett Daffin, and we are here to chat today about what you are doing to stay creative during the COVID-19 pandemic. And it is April 14th, 2020, and we have Irene Schlesinger, Mary Hertel, Becky Goldsmith, Lori Triplett, Lynn Coolish, Annie Smith, Allie Aller. Finally. And Hi, Allie, and Hi. Terry Lucas. We're just starting, Allie. Um, yeah. So welcome, everyone. We just, we're super excited to talk to you. We're actually doing three of these webinars because we got so many authors who wanted to share with us what they're doing. So I just wanted to first thank you all for taking time out of your um, stay at home <laughs> day to talk to us and then just sort of get a sense of what you're doing to stay creative during this time. Um, I have a list of questions, but I think it would be a lot nicer if we just sort of had a conversation. So would any, I think Becky, you should go first because you have a pandemic quilt in the background. <laughs> would you like to tell us about that? Yes, um, because I'm because primarily an applicator. And the very first time, it seems like forever ago, when I saw an image of the COVID-19 virus, I thought, oh, that's, that's kind of fun. And so I decided to take this one. Let me see here if I can move it up. See the red and green one, whoa, up there? Yes. And that's the most virus-like block. And then I played with the design and made it less and less like the virus. And I decided to put, there's six different steps. The pattern is all the way free, totally free. And I don't care how people share it online as long as they share the link to the pattern. And I'm doing videos to support it. You know, how to's with different applique methods and template making methods. But mostly I wanted to make something happy out of what is admittedly a scary, miserable, awful experience. So. Lemons out of lemonade. Lemonade out of lemons. Yes. That one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, that. Okay. So anyway, that's what that's what I have been doing to be creative, and it has been it's been really fun. Awesome. How about you, Irene? What have you been working on? Well, I've been working on masks, like we all probably have. Oh, yeah. You know, Ron Zucker. I am a friend of mine who, I guess, sells the the fabric. He donated tons of this beautiful fabric. So I have nothing better to do than this. My daughter works in a local hospital, so it's important to me. And I found after we ran out of elastic, ran out of ribbon, those loops, I think are one now, those loops that you made pot, pot holders with as a kid, <gasps> they work perfect and they're 100% cotton and they're really stretchy. So you can use them either as the elastic or as um, cut them and use them for ribbon. <coughs> so I'm working on my blog a little bit. Some of the techniques in my book are for embroidery on canvas. <laughs> so I've been doing that a little bit, really, really simple ones on tiny canvases. So if you know my blog, go check it out. There's some things in there. And you know, I did this on it, but using, because my book's a lot about using the mediums. And I don't have a lot of things here because we just, we're selling our house. There's, I'm in an empty house, so I have just the box of art supplies in the, from the garage to use. And wow. Uh, I'm thinking of, I read a good book about embroiderers by Tracy Chevalier. And also, I had, if you're familiar with my artwork, I have Chula Meat made into a great big puzzle for my family. Wow. So we've been busy in the pandemic. <laughs> Excellent. That's fantastic. Okay. What about you, Lynn? What have you been working on? Well, I also have been making masks, and um, I found online some genius figured it out and posted that you can cut up t-shirts and use that for the ties. So I have been using that, and fortunately our local guild here at BHQ has been coordinating getting masks distributed. So that certainly takes some amount of time. The other thing I've been doing is playing with tap now that it's out again. Um, let me see if I can hold up a couple of things. So this is one. Wow. Oh, That's oh, young. So this was, so tap is eight and a half by 11. This is like 10 by 12. 
And so what I did is that there's one image down here and then there's a second image up here. So oh. it's a, and you can't, and you can't see where they join, which is kind of fun. So one of my challenges has been trying to figure out how to make things that are bigger than eight and a half by 11 and find clever ways to uh, combine images. So um, the other thing that I love doing is playing with Photoshop. So, um, so I have two, I don't, can you see these okay? Mm -hmm. I have two images, one, the top one's a tree, the other one's, you know, kind of a forest scene. And what I've done is I've pulled them into Photoshop and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try this. This may or may not work. Can you guys see the screen? We can. Yeah. This is that one image that's been altered a little bit to make it more intense. Um, this is the second image, again, altered to make it a little more intense. And I can combine the two using what are called blending modes and come up with that. Now wow. that's, so it's gonna be too big to print. So what I'm playing around with is ways that I can split it up um, and combine it into one. And so what I've been doing is um, playing with things on a small scale and to just try it out rather than using, you know, big sheets of tap every time. So um, what I've been trying to do is things that are gonna end up being about four by six, which is postcard size. Because my guild also, uh, we, we don't sell them, we make them available at our quilt show for donation. So here's one example of things put together, of, you know, four quadrants put together. Um, and I wanted to see exactly how it printed out on the tap, but I'm still not quite happy with it. So I played around with it a little bit more, and this is just on paper right now. And so, the background has the images that came off the screen, but in the center, I've added a piece that's part of the original photo. So I'm thinking of kind of building some collages working like that. Nice. And so it's all of the, well, what about this? And what about that? Sort of, you know, keeps me going. And um, if I'm only playing with paper and ink, it's really easy to try a lot of different stuff to figure out what direction I want to go. So that's what I've been doing. That's wonderful. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what about you, Mary? Um, well, as Irene is doing, and probably every other person that sews um, is doing right now, is making the masks. So this is my version. It's a little more fitted through here and under the chin. And I devote every morning to sewing masks for donation. And I've worked up uh, I found this pattern originally online free, but I tweaked it so it would fit better. And I'm going to be putting it on my blog as a free pattern this week. I'm just waiting for a few more photos to get sent from people that I've donated to. So that's what I spend my morning doing. And then the rest of the day, you know, the usual um, designing. I'm working on promoting. This is the book that's coming out. So magical. All different fantasy type of um, blocks. And normally I create blocks that are a square shape. So they are always going to work. That's an eight by eight unfinished square. But for this book, I'm also doing rectangular. So there'll be more of a two blocks put together. And so what I was doing now lately is just taking that rectangular block that would be in the book and coming up with other patterns like this one. This is um, all different under the water things, but then they could substitute in two of the blocks for one of the blocks from the book. That way I have some patterns for sale that they can get online through Etsy that will correspond with the book and maybe entice people to buy both the book and the pattern that kind of go together. So that was my thought lately. Nice. Very good. Very good. What about you, Allie? Oh, I, I have a new passion. I've been exploring it for the last couple of years and it's a full bore thing and it's using vintage textiles in quilts. Um, and not just preserving them and placing them like on a background, like a doily, but actually considering the textiles as fabric. So I'll cut up part of an old quilt top and I'll piece that in as a border. And then I'll, well, I can show you. I just did a, a challenge with two of my friends, an apron challenge. 
and I can't show you the whole thing, but this has cross cross uh, chicken scratch aprons. It's got an old Quaker tablecloth. It's got some very fine um, arbor stitch in the middle. And I just might, I always want to make a functional quilt. So it's very soft. It's very yummy. It was a very creative, I have to say, exploration for me. Um, another thing I'm doing is I'm taking old quilt cutters, basically, and um, revamping them, um, transforming them. This says R and A. It's a double wedding ring, and that's my husband's and my initials. I don't know if it looks backwards to you or not, but no, it looks right. No, it looks yeah. forward. So um, I'm I'm working um, I'm working with that, and then. Um, my challenge for myself is I'm really trying to learn free motion machine quilting in a serious way. As a crazy quilter, you don't have to learn how to machine quilt. And I did crazy quilting exclusively for 15 years. And and then I just, um, you know, the muse kind of takes you in a new direction. And I really, I realized I had to use um, quilting elements as an integral part of my design and I had never thought that way before. So I'm just starting to experiment with that and wow. here I'm using, wow. I'm, thank you, I'm using old fabrics, I'm using doilies, I'm using as the background, it was a stitched little table topper, but it's really, I think on this experiment, it's really about the quilting and that's that was very scary for me to start, but I'm getting used to it and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So I would say practicing the discipline of quilting and then experimenting like crazy with vintage textiles. That's, that's been my focus. And I just, I just got this book, you know, I'm crazy about flowers. It's called Cultivated the Elements of Floral Style. I found her on Instagram and I'm a complete fan of what she does with flowers. And I just, I just wanted you guys to see it. It's, wow. it's so beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. What an amazing. Yeah, her name is Kristen Gale. She was all set to launch her book in New York and she'd been working for two years getting this and then boom, quarantine, everything got iced. But, um, we love her so much that we're <laughs> we're spreading the word wherever we can because I think she's a genius. So anyway, that's been inspiring me the 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 book and the work of other people's hands and getting to use them myself. So I've been busy. <laughs> I know I follow you on Instagram. I see what you're up to. Um, All right, Lori, let tell us what you've been up to. Um, well, I have been working on developing more episodes for my YouTube channel, um, and since the quarantine and we can't get in our production studio, I've been doing it from home, and so we've really been focusing on exhibitions um, that people can't get to see um, because the museums are closed. Um, for example, I have a quilt that's in the Hall of Fame, Quilters Hall of Fame in Indiana, but that exhibition is closed. And so uh, people aren't really able to go and see it. And so right now we thought that was one way that we could sort of help to do different exhibitions. Um, and so that's been the focus uh, on that particular thing. On my artistic front, I have been hand painting a textile. See if I can get it back far enough. And um, this we are, have turned into fabric and it's a center medallion. Um, and so I'm working on two different quilts that use that in two different styles um, to see what that is like. Um, and I have a vintage fabric on a quilt that I've just finished the quilt top and ready to move into quilting. And then just over the weekend, we launched our newest uh, pattern which was a cover quilt from one of our books. And it's an antique quilt, of course. Um, and it has a goldfish bowl in it and lots of fun, different, unique um, patterns on it. So um, that's kind of what I've been up to. Wonderful, wonderful. And then Annie Smith. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, I was stuck in North Carolina 
uh, on a teaching trip when everything closed down. And so I wow. had to fly home from there. And when I got home, I was in quarantine for 14 days <laughs> to make sure that I didn't bring it home to my husband. And so I have this lovely workroom and I don't like being in here because it makes me feel even more closed off from the world. So I have overtaken the kitchen, dining room, great room. And now that is my work area. And there is work on every surface because, well, as ADD people, we need to have a lot of little different projects to work on. And I find that actually it helps me break up the day so that every day doesn't feel like Groundhog's Day. Mm -hmm. And so here are a couple of things of the things that I'm working on. So I had this at Quilt Market. I, um, I wanted to do an alphabet, the complete alphabet. A, this is A is for applique or A is for Annie or you know that A word that people hate. But um, I love it. <laughs> and so I'm working on designing the rest of the alphabet. And hopefully I'll have that done at the end of the pandemic. I'm, I've been working fairly quickly. But because I can't just work on one project, I mean, my design wall usually has five different projects on it. Because I like to be able to work on something until I either get stuck or I feel the siren call of the next project that's up there. So my daughter has me working on two different quilt alongs from people who I had no idea who they were before uh, we were all sheltered in place. And so now I have two different friends now that I'm following and making quilts and, and using fabric that I haven't been able to get into for a long time. Because, I mean, let's face it, we're all at home now. We're not teaching and traveling and so for the first time in probably 10 years I am home for a four-month period of time because all of my gigs have been rescheduled to after that and so now I have this surplus of wonderful time to be able to do just what I want to do so I actually organized all of my dressmaking patterns and now I'm on to cataloging uh, all of my dressmaking fabrics in the Cora app. If you haven't seen it, it's great. You take a picture of your fabric, say how much you have, and any additional notes that you need to be able to remind yourself. So now I have that all on my phone. So when I go shopping, well, when I get to go out of the house and shop, um, I can take it with me so that I don't either duplicate what I've already got, or I know what I want to use for a specific project. So when I'm done with my dressmaking fabric, which I'm halfway through now, I'm going to turn to my quilting stash, wow. <laughs> which is a daunting idea. But then I have one more thing to share with you. I am doing a commission for a corporation and they wanted something very, very different from what I usually do. This is a sample. Wow. Of what I'm doing. And it looks like a roadmap, right? Yeah. A cut up roadmap. And they wanted um, it, the idea of home. And so, you know, I had to do a little sample to see how it was going to work, see how I was going to be able to quilt it, because they wanted it to be very modern. And this thing is 120 by 140, and it's going to hang right. in the lobby of a new hospital. Wow. And um, so it is called All Roads Lead Home. And it's a really emotional, very, very tough project to work on. And so that's why I have to have these other little things that I can turn to in the meantime um, so that I work on the commission for, you know, one day and then the next day I work on a couple of other things. But all of the organizing, sorting, refolding, you know, putting all my fabric together and stuff are, is the little thing I do when I have an hour, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that I want to do something to fill my time. But so th this has been a really eye-opening time, I think, probably for everybody in that we're reordering our lives in a way, you know, and, and may, perhaps turning to things that we haven't been able to do for a long time because now we have the freedom to do whatever. 
So you bring up a really interesting point, um, and I think it'd be interesting just to have a conversation about this, is how many people are not, how many of you typically travel and teach? Cut way back. Okay. Yeah. All right. So th since you're stuck at home and you're not traveling and teaching, um, how are you trying something new? What are you doing differently since you've got this chunk of time at home that's really I, yours? I, I don't have a chunk of time that's free. I appear to be busier than I've ever been. <laughs> and, and part of it is, I mean, it's, I don't, it's part of it is the mask making because that does take three to four hours a day. And I was going to add something about that. The t-shirts is a really good idea, Lynn. We're moving yeah. on to that. Yeah. But I have two friends who are not sewers who want to help. And so we're breaking it up. I get things done and ready for the mask to turn inside out. That batch goes to Christina. And she turns them and presses them. It gives her a feeling of control as well. And now I've got another friend who's going to cut up t-shirts to make the ties. So those of you who are making masks, if you have friends who want to help, you might be able to find a way to let them help that actually makes it faster. But between the mask making and this quilt and making videos for this quilt and writing newsletters and then thinking about what's coming next after this quilt, um, I'm as busy as I've ever been. Okay. All right. I agree with that because I'm constantly working on blog posts and just to keep up with social media is a, <laughs> is a week's job in itself. And so I can just, I basically <laughs> am doing what I've always been doing. Yeah. Working on the blog and sewing and creating and drawing and <clears throat> makes up the day. I, I think I would have to agree. I spend all day, every day in here working and Outwardly, my life hasn't changed a whole lot, except for, you know, the horrible things I'm witnessing out there in the world. But I just, I just feel now more than ever, it's time to really bear down on what's inside and, and develop it and get it out there. Because this time is a gift. It's an mm -hmm. island that's been given to us and given to everybody. Um, for people watching who, who aren't used to being in their sewing space or their design space, I, I would I would recommend um, try try playing a little bit try bringing out a few fabrics or whatever you have and just arrange them on the table in different ways make little compositions yeah. it's not something that you're going to have to spend a whole day on or a month on or anything but just try playing with putting your fabrics together in different proportions and in different um, different combinations and I think everybody can benefit from that and have fun with that and it's something that we all have so a little design exercise a little play exercise give it a try i i do that a lot <laughs> i like that idea anyone else i just i like the idea of doing small things and um i don't know if if other people have ways to use small things uh like i said you know my guild uh, does postcards and so I know that whatever I make that's in that four by six format, I can donate to the guild and I'll be able to use it. Um, I'm also a member of SACWA. And I know that, you know, eventually there's going to be a 12 by 12 auction. And next year there's going to be another six by eight inch auction. So it's a great way to, <clears throat> to, to do small things. So you're not trying to, you know, um, wield a huge quilt and make a huge investment in something that's going to be really time consuming. And I think when you're trying something new and playing around that working small is a really great way to do it. Definitely. And this is a great time to do it. Definitely. I like that idea. What about you, Lori? I've tried to actually um, shift my business model to uh, things that I can do from here. Um, I'm expanding our offerings in the Etsy shop the YouTube channel, um, having patterns available, things like that, that will still allow people to create um, and be connected. I have a blog besides the vlog now. So those are all things that um, I can do from here um, in my workspace and uh, continue to 
connect with uh, other quilters and, and keep us all hopefully inspired and moving forward. So Amy, I have one thing to share. Sure. Yeah. And so I belong to the Quilt Pattern Designers Facebook group, and mm -hmm. several of us are CNT authors. And so Tammy Silvers and Cherry Guidry um, got together a group of us where we do 15 minute trunk shows at the top of the hour and it's all scheduled out. We did it for the last 10 days and it was so much fun trying to decide what we were going to show in our trunk show and just for 15 minutes and that time went by like crazy. But we have just a flood of new followers and we were able to put our videos up on our uh, Facebook pages and stuff. And so in May, we're gonna be doing another one where we're going to do live um, a tip or a technique or something like that out of our books. And so it, that's something that I've never done before, but now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've gotta get, <laughs> do more Facebook Live and I've gotta, get my YouTube channel going and stuff like that because it's easier than I thought. And of course, I was never home long enough to do anything like that. And now that I have de dedicated time at home, it's a whole lot easier to think about. That's great. That's great. Um, so have any of you, I know Allie, you mentioned it, that you've tried something new with your free motion quilting. What about the rest of you? Have you tried something that you haven't tried in the past? I've been no. doing some machine applique. <laughs> machine applique is new for me. So it is new I've for you. some of that. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Anybody else? Well, I'm also working on some machine quilting that I don't, um, haven't traditionally done a lot of that before, but I also, each quilt that I make, I do really try and try a new technique or a new approach that I hadn't tried before because I just think there is a lot to learn and an amazing array, uh, array of tools and choices we can use now. I would really like to try some of that tap. I, I can send you some. Oh, I'd love, now, what kind of a printer do you need? Just any so, old, any old ink inkjet? Inkjet, any, you can use any inkjet. You can also draw and paint on it. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> what's neat about it is the tap is basically a backing sheet with a polymer coating on it mm -hmm. and the and, the, and in the transfer process, the polymer encapsulates whatever's on there. So for example, you know, if you were to just take watercolor paint and paint on fabric, it would wash off if it got wet. But if you do your watercolor on the tap and then transfer it, it becomes permanent. Oh, how neat is that? So you can play with paints, uh, colored pencils, well, painting. I'm thinking um, I would get permission from Kristen and I would want to get one of her glorious images on fabric and then either piece with it or embroider on it or just, it's, that is an experiment that I would just love to do. It's, it's, an e it's an easy way to get an image on fabric. And one of the things I like about the tap is that it, it, it I, I will say it does change the hand of the fabric a little bit. It will stiffen it up a little bit. But if you're, you know, you can take your inkjet printer and, and put a backing on a piece of fabric and run it through your inkjet printer at home. But because the fabric is kind of absorbent, you don't get, you don't, you don't get a really crisp, vibrant image. And don't. The transfers, it's very sharp and very vibrant. I'm excited. So I'm yeah. excited. So yeah. So I've been playing around with TAP. We're working on a little booklet. Um, myself and a couple other colleagues at CNT, and we came across this Flickr gallery called Biodiversity, Heritage Biodiversity, and it's over 150,000 images that came into the public domain this year. And the images, they're 72 DPI, but you can print them out on the transfer artist paper you can play around with the images in any editing program for a photo. 
and then transfer them on. And they are, they're really amazing images. And I went down the rabbit hole of flowers and mushrooms um, and have been having a lot of fun with that. So, and I'd never what, used tap before this. What's the name of the Flickr site? It's the Heritage Biodiversity. Hold on and let me find it. I'm pretty sure I have it saved in my bookmark and I can add it. And the other thing is you can right click on it and you can just download to your desktop. And these are all in the public domain. And boy, talk about going crazy with them. I've had such a good time. So, and we're doing all transfers on ready-mades because that's where we're trying to position this particular book. Um, on ready-mades, so you mean already printed fabrics? What do you mean? No, 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 like things like um, canvas tote bags. Oh, right, right, right. Baby right. bibs, baby onesies. Um, I did a kid's apron, t-shirts. Yeah, I did a kid's apron and it's like, it's a craft apron and it, I tapped these little colored pencils and then I made a little craft text denim pocket oh, and stitched it on. So, you know, stuff like that. So, Very cute. Nice. Yeah. How long do you think you're going to be here? You know, are you planning for, I think you said four months, Annie, are you planning? Do you guys think we're going to be home for another couple of months? Boy. At I, think I think at least mm -hmm. I would much rather be safe then sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just really thankful for the places where I was scheduled to teach for canceling. Um, you know, and now I, and, and obviously everyone who's teaching is still sitting here going, well, what's going to happen in July? What's going to happen in August? Yeah. How long is this going to go on? You know, will it continue into the fall and will it affect fall market and fall festival? And I think all we can do is wait and be smart about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the Quilt Alliance has Quilters Take Manhattan coming up at the end of September. And it's, you know, it's a big deal for us and it's really fun. And it's, but it's like Manhattan, September. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a difference between getting on a plane and flying somewhere to going where you know you can keep social distance, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea for me of getting on a plane before there's a vaccine well, that's a little iffier maybe than driving somewhere, right? Okay. Well, except Becky, there were only 40 people on my flight. I don't know if they had a whole role. And, <laughs> there is you know. that. Yeah. Yeah. Driving, <laughs> driving, you have to go and stop at gas stations yeah. and you don't know what Which you're Which are closed. There, right. right? Yeah. But but on the other, I have a 97-year-old father-in-law who yeah. normally my husband and I go see him every two weeks in LA and it's very hard not to go see him. And I'm like, mask me up, get the spray disinfectant. I want to go, you know? So sometimes things you have to or, you yep. know, really want to. It's it's going to, we. there's so much we don't know. Mm -hmm. And until we know what we don't know, <laughs> We <laughs> won't know what we're going to do. That's kind of the essence of hard right now. Irene, did you want to say something? Oh, no, no. I just like, yeah. We did. Amy, yeah. I, Amy, I'd like to know how things are going for C&T. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're doing pretty well. Um, the funny thing is we had two really sort of strange set of circumstances that have been really good for C&T. One was... Um, uh, I had made the decision to move us to a cloud-based computing. So we have everything stored in the cloud now on Google Drive. And that allowed us to have everyone work at home. So that was the first thing because we didn't have that before. The other thing was um, Todd went to QuiltCon and he came home and he got sick. And at the time... Galen and I were trying to figure out because he was really sick and we were hearing this was in February end of February and we were hearing about the coronavirus and so we said well what if Todd has coronavirus we should have a pandemic plan and Todd said the same thing we all sort of agreed at the same time so we had a plan by March 1st wow of what we were going to do how we were going to do it who had compute we'd surveyed the staff who had computers at home who did they all have good internet um, so then when it, we were ready a week before they called us to shelter in place, 
Um, so everyone was ready to go. So everyone's still working and, um, you know, we're trying to take advantage of the government support that's out there to keep small businesses going. And we're keeping all of our books on track um, and all of our products. Some things may be delayed by a week or two because um, we have a limited amount of space for people to get into our back end business systems. And that's really our only slowdown is mm. when we put in a virtual private network, our firewall can only allow 10 people in at a time. And we have about 30. And so everyone was kicking everybody off, <laughs> which is super unproductive and frustrating. So we um, are taking advantage of having some people take the um, expanded sick leave so that other people can work and then other people it. get a break. Because everybody it. needs a break right now. Just trying to work like everything's normal, I think is tough. Yeah, especially if you have kids at home, that would make it really complicated. And we do. We've got people who have young children and we have people who have teenagers and um, everything in between. And so we're just trying to be really mindful of how can we support everyone. We do check-ins. Um, and so far, everybody seems to be doing pretty well. I'm so glad to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the middle of a book edit right now and it's gone seamlessly. Good. Even sending in hard copies of things to people, they're just giving me their home address and yeah. it's all working really well. Nice. Yeah, and we've we've been doing um, Facebook Lives. I've been doing them. Sophie, um, who is a sales in our sales department, has been doing them. She was able to get the April book, so she was able to do the April unboxing. So we're all just sort of figuring out how to do it. My um, new husband Frank has been my videographer when I do mine and so that's really fun because it's like hey are you free at 10 because I need you to hold the camera for me it's like <laughs> no problem so fun. yeah so and yeah and getting to be um, sheltering in place with as a newlywed isn't all bad so <laughs> <laughs> is Todd better he is. He's 100% better. And when it first happened, I said, I think you have coronavirus. He's like, I do not. And now he's like, I think you had coronavirus. <laughs> wow. So, but he and his, they both got sick and they're both better now, which is awesome. And he's been amazing. He's just, he's done so many wonderful things to keep um, everything going. And, you know, it's been really, we're really fortunate to uh, be the company that we are. We're oh, I'm lucky. So so glad to hear it. So yeah, me too. Me too. So I'm curious about something. How many of you have started organizing your stash? I know Annie, you're you've made the bold step. Oh, yeah. Allie, <laughs> Becky. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, Look at that. Goodness. It good? No. no. I'm, I'm so everything proud. I have is on is in a pot. I have, wow. I have no art supplies. I just have what I happen to have. When, on March 13th when we shut down. So I have no, fa I mean, I had someone donate the fabric because I didn't even have access to my own stuff. So I can't organize anything. And that was, I'm so excited when we finally, we just, we're in the process of selling our house. We have an uh, offer we're negotiating right now. I can't wait to get to a new place and just do the studio perfectly. I've got all the, <laughs> you know, so basically it's all on paper, my organizing. Nice. I wish I could say I'm organizing drawers and fabric like everyone keeps telling me they're organizing and cleaning and I just keep sewing masks and it's like every time I'm going to pump out 10 more. I, you know, it just hasn't happened yeah. yet. I think I'll organize soon, but I can't even show you my sewing room right now. It's disgusting. Oh. Well, my fabric is organized because I just keep it in drawers and I take out what I need and I put away what I don't need, but the rest of the studio is a mess. Wow, you got us. Can you see my wall of threads over there? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my. I, I, the best thing about it is I know exactly where everything <laughs> is. Yeah. And Isn't so when I'm great? starting something, I can go straight to it. It's just like a revelation <laughs> to me. I never used to be that one. Yeah. One of the things I did with organizing is that I showed, I took pictures of, of the steps and the thing, the, um, you know, the, the things that I use, because I use comic book boards and then the little plastic um, bags that they go in. And then I got dividers. And, and so I 
um, took pictures of it and I put all of my steps and how I did everything up on Instagram and Facebook so that people who follow me can see just exactly what my method is and be able to actually order those things and, and do it themselves. So I was doing it kind of as a, an incentive to get other people inspired to do it, but then getting my own done at the same time. <laughs> That's great. That's I great. I started organizing. <laughs> Okay. I, I, I'm just trying to get caught up and, and again, um, get the electronic uh, version going and, and having more connection that way. That's a big change. <clears throat> it is a big change, but I just had a uh, cancellation for mm -hmm. one of the big gigs in September. And so, um, you know, I just don't know how long this will continue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I think is important um, if you do have a social media presence is really trying to think of ways to reach out to your, um, your people, your tribe, um, the people that follow you, and also just letting them know what you're working on, what's inspiring you, because I think that you all are on the front lines of inspiring others by the art that you do and the things that you make and, um, you know, sharing your passion for doing things with needle and thread and cloth. And um, so I think it's really important to know that you're out there trying to continue to inspire. And Laura, you shared with us how you're doing it. And Becky, you shared with us how you're doing it. Um, and Annie, so, uh, for the others of you, what um, have you thought of any ideas or different ways that you can reach out to your people during this time? I haven't been doing anything different. It's just the same posting on Instagram and Facebook. I don't, I don't do a ton of social media. Okay. There's I'm a, pretty much uh, involved in blog hops. I do a lot of blog hops. So this has given me some time to kind of come up with new things for them. And yeah, I mean, I'm, pretty much doing what I've always been doing on, on social media. Okay. Um, there's a couple Facebook groups in my little niche. There's one called Quilting Vintage. And um, it's people, people like me who are, you know, either they're just on fire for this stuff or they've inherited an old top or this or that. They don't know what to do with it. And so people are, this group, has 17,000 people in it now. It's grown oh, by 5,000 in the last couple of years. So I'm very active on that particular group and also on my um, handy quilter Capri 18, my new love, very active on that group also. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm reaching out to the people who are interested in the same things that I am actually. But there's, there's plenty of them out there. It's really fun. Excellent. Excellent. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add about that? Is there <laughs> anything we didn't talk about that you would like to talk about? Anything that you're hoping, any words of wisdom you'd like to share with the rest of our creative world before we go? I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So my thing for years and years and years has always been, I've gotten up and just been so excited about what I was working on that day that I would generally work in pajamas and strap on figurative roller skates to just go through the day. And I'd look up at the clock and it'd be four o'clock or five o'clock. And it was just like, oh my gosh, I've been in my nightgown all day. <laughs> but one of the things that that sheltering in place and being quarantined for 14 days did for me was that I realized that if I was working because I work every day, um, that I can't be in just my regular <laughs> uniform to work. And so I went into my closet and I'm looking at all these clothes that I love, that are beautiful, that I bought for a reason that I generally wear when I go out and teach. And I just thought, you know what? I am going to get dressed up 
today in the clothes that I love because they make me feel happy. And so I shared that on Facebook and a friend of mine said, oh, well, not only that, but I put on makeup and put my jewelry on every day just in Whoa. case this thing is lifted and I can run outside and go somewhere. <laughs> Well, my, my goal is to wear different earrings every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing that I've noticed is in some ways things haven't changed because both my husband and I work at home. We're here every day. You know, what's different is that we can't go out and hang out with friends or go out to eat, you know, um, you know, or go to the store and feel comfortable. And the one thing that I've had to acknowledge is that there are times when I just feel emotional. And it isn't any one particular thing, but I think we all have to recognize what's going on around us and, and let, it, let it happen and feel what we're going to feel and then move on. Mm -hmm. But try, not trying to deny those feelings that we're getting. I think it's important to recognize them for what they are. Right. Yep. Anyone else? I guess I would say I just think it's really important to keep creating mm -hmm. that it's easy to kind of stop and get absorbed. And, and it's important to do some of the other things like sewing masks or, or whatever you feel to, that you are helping uh, your community or your individual. But, but we are artists and all of us need to keep creating. Totally agree with that. It's the thing that makes me want to get out of bed in the morning. Yep. We share that. Um, sure. Yeah, I actually was, uh, messaging um, Christy Zacharias, who used to be our art director, and she was saying that she wasn't getting dressed and, you know, she was working all day in her running clothes. And I messaged her and I said, you know, I've been getting up and I put on makeup. I put on clothes as if I'm leaving the office with the exception of I may wear leggings instead of pants or I have flip flops on instead of shoes and earrings and everything as if I'm going to the office because it's the one thing that makes me feel normal. And yeah. so it, 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 that's what I need to do to make me feel normal because I'm such an extrovert that being home all day is like the, the, the worst <laughs> thing that could happen. <laughs> I hear ya. <laughs> so, so having a little bit of normalcy makes a huge difference. And I, I found that it, it really does help because the days where I'm sort of like, eh, then it, it, the days are longer and it's harder. So Annie, I like your, I'm getting dressed up in my nice clothes and. That yeah. sounds so good. I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay too. At least you're getting dressed. Hooray. Well, most probably days. the other thing I would, I would say is in some capacity, get the body moving, go for a walk, oh, get yeah. some exercise. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Super yes. important for my head more than my body actually. Yeah. Is to get, try, try and get some exercise every day of some kind. Yeah. I can't go to my gym anymore. And my, my, my teacher is going to have a field day with me. It's like, <laughs> The Corona 10, you know, here they are. We got to get rid of them again. <laughs> but, um, and I miss that a lot, but, but you got to keep moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We've definitely been keeping busy and yeah, we put in a little garden and I think now's a great time to go outside and walk around and get some inspiration because springtime is just such a beautiful time so so i'm just curious real quickly i s asked each of you a question how many masks have you made so i'm just curious i'd like to get a quick total here from this group alone how many masks have you made irene 175 i have the next 25 ready for me to cut out and then i'm out of fabric and i have to call ron zucker again okay <laughs> all right how about you mary i've donated 135 and it's I've been very fortunate. I keep finding elastic on eBay and just keep going. Good for you. you are fortunate. <laughs> what about you, Becky? Um, we're probably creeping up on 300 made and I've got an assembly line now. We do 12 a day, so it's 72 a week. We'll keep it up as long as we have people who need masks. Okay, Lori? Uh, I am the, the uh, low man on the totem pole here. In our area, food is more needed. So we've actually been, uh, 
I've been focusing more on making sure that people have food to eat. Cool. Oh. Yeah. And so That's I have great. not, um, have not made a mask. That's okay. That's okay. There Lynn? Others who are. I haven't been counting. Um, probably a little bit less than a hundred. Okay. And what about you, Allie? Have you been making masks? Three. Three? For personal yeah. use. Annie? And well, we have a local small business who um, got together with a canvas company and decided to make masks. And they said, we'll make as many as you will order and you can order as many as you want and then donate them. And so they have made 140,000 canvas. Wow. <laughs> and we have bought 150 and given them to our daughter-in-law, who is a mom and baby delivery nurse at the local hospital, oh, wow. so that she could take them into her hospital. And that's the way we're giving back. Nice Good job. for you. Well, uh, I've made... It, it was a way to support a local... Amy. 52. Yeah, 52. Yep, 52. So I go in fits and spurts. I do them on a weekend, and then I go back to my regular work during the week. So... It's hard to do it during the week when I'm working, but yeah. well, I wanted to thank you all so much for being on the call today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all your insight and it's just great to see all your faces and get to chat with you a little bit. So I hope y'all stay healthy um, and keep creating because we definitely need inspiration from you right now. So thank you all very much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.